Let's talk about bit depth. You may have heard of this and wondered what the big deal was. And before we get into how it relates to your images, let's talk about what the heck a bit is. A bit is a single binary digit, and it's the smallest piece of information a computer can deal with. In fact, at their most fundamental level, it's the only type of information computers can deal with. A bit represents one of two possible states, usually depicted as a 1 or a 0. When you're looking at a photograph on your computer, it's stored as a long series of 1s and zeros. When you're watching a movie or listening to music, streams of 1s and zeros. Now, they don't have to be actual 1s and zeros. We use that as a convenient notation to represent the process happening inside the computer. Your machine's processor, for example, uses either an electric charge or a lack of electric charge across a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, or MOSFET, sometimes just called a logic gate, to represent these two possible states. A traditional spinning hard drive stores the bits as small magnetized sections, a one, or non-magnetized sections, a zero, on a metal platter. Um, a coin could store binary information as heads or tails. With enough coins, you could store a digital copy of your favorite song. So what does this have to do with your pictures? Well, each pixel in your image is represented by a certain number of binary digits. In a standard 8-bit per channel image, each pixel in each color channel, the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, is represented by 8 bits of information. Now, for the sake of argument, let's say you had an image in which each pixel was represented by one bit of information. How many possible states, or in this case shades of gray, could each pixel have? Well, think of a light switch, which is also a binary device. It's either on or off. Yes or no, black or white. Aha, black or white. Each pixel could be either black, off, or white, on. Now, believe it or not, the first Macintosh monitors were one-bit displays. Each pixel on the screen was either black or white. Not just no color, but no shades of gray. Remember when computer monitors were black screens with white text, or going back a bit further, when they were black screens with green or even amber text? One-bit displays. Now, let's say we added a second bit of information to each pixel. How many shades of gray could each pixel contain then? And we started with one bit and two possible states. Adding a second bit doubles the possibilities to four. Instead of either zero or one, we could now have zero, 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 one, 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 or one, zero. Adding a third bit doubles the possibilities again to zero, 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 one, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1, 1, or eight possible shades of gray. A fourth bit would double it again to 16. Five bits would give 32, six bits, 64. Are these numbers starting to sound familiar? Odds are the computer that you're reading this on or viewing this on has either four, eight, or maybe 16 gigs of RAM. Higher end computers can handle 32, even 64 gigs. Your phone probably has 16, 32, 64, or possibly 128 gigs of storage in it. 8-bit gaming is all the rage these days, at least in the slightly nerdy crowds. Uh, my first computer was a Commodore 64. My first Macintosh had a 16 megahertz processor and eight megs of RAM. These numbers pop up all the time in computing because of their binary nature, just like numbers like 100, 1,000, 100,000, etc. pop up a lot in our decimal system of counting. Seven bits of information would give us 128, and adding an eighth bit would give us 256 possible shades of gray, from the darkest pixel all the way up to the lightest one, from black to white, from zero to 255. So an 8-bit per channel image has 256 shades of gray available to each color channel. Now, 256 shades of gray is enough for what we call continuous tone, meaning that any two shades that are side by side are virtually indistinguishable from each other. If we created a gradient from black to white with 256 shades of gray, it would be a nice smooth gradient with no visible edges between gray tones. Hmm. Now, if 256 shades of gray is enough for continuous tone, then what's the big deal about 16 bits per channel? Well, imagine, if you will, an elastic cord, and on this cord are strung 256 glass beads, a black one on the left, a white one on the right, and 254 different shades of gray in between. So you'd have a nice smooth gradient from black to white. Now, pick any two beads that are side by side, and you'd be hard-pressed to tell them apart. They look to be pretty much the same shade. Now, let's say you wanted to lighten or darken your image, so you grab the middle bead and start pulling it to the left or the right. The entire image is getting lighter or darker, but what's happening to the shades of gray? Well, imagine you're pulling the bead to the left. What's happening to the beads that were on the left side of the cord? There's no longer enough room for them, and some are popping off the cord. You're losing shades of gray. And what about the beads that were on the right side of the cord? They're starting to separate and get gaps in them, also causing damage to the image. 
Now, imagine you'd shot the image in the RAW format, giving you access to 16 bits per channel. Now each pixel can be represented by up to 65,000 shades of gray. Now imagine that same chord with 65,000 beads on it. You grab the middle bead and pull it to the left or the right, and it, it doesn't matter as much if a few hundred beads pop off the chord because you still have thousands of shades left. So 16 bits per channel gives you a hardier, more robust, more resistant to damage image that will stand up better to repeated retouching efforts.